in this video we're going to focus on identifying substances as being paramagnetic or diamagnetic. What you need to know is that if it's paramagnetic it contains unpaired electrons. Now if it doesn't have any unpaired electrons it's diamagnetic. So let's go through some examples. Magnesium. Is it paramagnetic or is it diamagnetic? So what we need to do is write the electron configuration for magnesium. So the first energy level only has the 1s sublevel. The second energy level has the 2s and 2p sublevel. For the third energy level, it's 3s, 3p, 3d. And for the fourth, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f. Now, the S sublevel can only hold two electrons, and the P sublevel can hold six, D can hold up to 10, and F can hold up to 14 electrons. The atomic number for magnesium, if you look at the periodic table, it's 12. So we're going to write the electron configuration until the exponents add up to 12. So we're going to start with the 1s orbital. It's going to be uh, 1s2, because S can hold up to two electrons. Then after 1s, we have the 2s sublevel, so 2s2. After 2s, we have 2p, then 3s. So it's going to be 2p6. If we add the exponents, right now we have a total of 10. We only need two more to get to 12. So we can stop at 3s2. This is the electron configuration for magnesium. It's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw the orbital diagram. So here's the electron configuration. And first we're going to have the 1s level, 2s level. P has three orbitals. S only has one. So this is 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s. Now, notice that the energy levels where the orbitals are completely filled. There's no unpaired electrons. Therefore, since all of the electrons are paired, magnesium is diamagnetic. A substance that is diamagnetic is weakly repelled by an external magnetic field. So let's go ahead and try another example. What about manganese? Is it paramagnetic or is it diamagnetic? So feel free to pause the video and try this example yourself. So the first thing we need to do is write the electron configuration. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Now the atomic number for manganese is 25. So look, we're going to start with the 1s sublevel. S can hold up to two electrons. After 1s, we have uh, 2s. So this is going to be 2s2. Then after that, it's 2p, then 3s. P can hold up to six electrons, so it's 2p6, and then 3s2. After 3s, we have 3p, then 4s. So 3p6, 4s2. So 2 plus 2 plus 6, that's 10. And 2 and 6 and 2 that's also 10 so we have a total of 20 we need 5 more to get to 25 now the 3d sublevel can hold up to 10 electrons but well, since we only need 5 more we're going to stop at 3d5 so that is the ground state electron configuration for manganese so now we can draw the orbital diagram now we know everything is going to be filled except the last um, sublevel. So let's focus on the 3D sublevel. Now according to Hund's rule, whenever you have orbitals or degenerate orbitals, that's orbitals of the same energy, you need to add the electrons one at a time. So you can't add them like this. You have to add them one at a time with parallel spins. So if the first one is facing up, the second arrow has to be facing up. So that's the main idea behind Hund's rule. 
And as you can see, we have five unpaired electrons, which means that manganese is paramagnetic. So it's weakly attracted to an external magnetic field. So what about this uh, element, nickel? Is it paramagnetic or is it diamagnetic? Feel free to pause the video and try this example yourself. So nickel has an atomic number of 28. And so if we write the electron configuration, it's going to be starting with 1s. We have a 1s2 and then 2s2 and then 2p6, 3s2 and then after 3s2 it's a 3p6, 4s2 and then after that we need to go to the 3d sublevel. Right now if you add all the exponents 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 that's 20. We need 8 more so we're gonna stop at 3d8. So let's draw the orbital diagram for this element. So this is gonna be 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, and then 4s, and then the d sublevel has five orbitals. Now, according to the off-ball principle, we need to fill the lower energy levels first before filling the higher energy levels. So you got to start at the bottom. And then according to Hund's rule, once you have orbitals of the same energy, like these three 2p orbitals, you have to add the electrons one at a time with parallel spins. So now we need to fill the 3D sublevel. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So nickel has two unpaired electrons, which makes it a paramagnetic. Now, how many paired electrons does it have? A quick way that you can find the number of paired electrons instead of counting them is notice that the total number of electrons in a neutral atom of nickel is 28. So 28 minus the two unpaired electrons will give you the number that is paired. So we have 26 paired electrons, two unpaired electrons. But overall, the substance is still paramagnetic. So for the sake of practice, let's try one final example. Let's use zinc. Zinc has an atomic number of 30. So go ahead and try this example and see if you can get the answer. Determine if it's paramagnetic or if it's diamagnetic. So let's begin. So we have 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f. So just like before, we're going to start with 1s. So we have uh, 1s2, and then 2s2, and then after 2s, we have the 2p sublevel, so it goes up to 2p6, then 3s2. After a while, you can easily commit this to memory. So then this is going to be 3p6, 4s2, so we have a total of 20. We need 10 more. Now, 3d can hold up to 10, so we're going to stop at 3d10. This is the electron configuration for zinc. By the way, make sure you know the exceptions. The exceptions are chromium, molybdenum, copper, silver, gold. When you're writing the electron configuration for those elements, an S electron is going to jump into the D orbital. So make sure you're aware of that. Now, this is the ground state electron configuration. Do you know how to write the electron configuration using noble gas notation? The noble gas that's before zinc is argon. Argon has an atomic number of 18. So therefore, argon covers the electron configuration up to 3p6. 
if you add 2, 2, 6, 2, and 6, you get 18. So the electron configuration of zinc using noble gas notation, it's argon, 4s2, 3d10. So now let's uh, fill the uh, orbital diagram. So here's the 4s sublevel, and here is the 3d sublevel. So the 4s energy level is going to be completely filled, and the same is true for the 3d sublevel. So as you can see, all of the electrons are paired in zinc, so therefore zinc is diamagnetic. It has 30 paired electrons and no unpaired electrons. So that is it for this video. You know how to write the electron configuration, um, ground state, and use the noble gas notation. And now you know how to identify if an element is paramagnetic or diamagnetic. So thanks for watching this video, and uh, have a great day.